rush into my house with gun drawn and everything, the, the thought that went through my mind was that don't do anything that will cause them to shoot us. Thank you for being here. We have, um, I think, an important announcement for today. We are here today to say enough is enough. I am announcing that I have ordered the creation of a China initiative led by Assistant Attorney General John Demers. We will not allow our sovereignty to be disrespected, our intellectual property to be stolen, or our people to be robbed of their hard-earned prosperity. We will enforce our laws. We will protect America's national interest. Thank you. The current concerns about espionage, the idea that every person of Chinese descent in America is a sleeper agent waiting to rise up upon a signal from Beijing, well, it's not new. This is far from the first time where we've seen the displacement of domestic concerns onto foreign enemies. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of foreign students come here every year. We've now reached the point where the FBI is opening a new China-related counterintelligence case about every 10 hours. Christopher Ray described the threat as all of society. And he talked about unconventional collectors. He means students, scholars. The uh, execution and the enforcement under the China initiative has gone increasingly heavy-handed. The uh, Secretary of State described the tension between the U.S. and China uh, in the terms of a uh, Cold War and was saying Communist China is already within our borders. That's almost exact language that Joseph McCar McCarthy used. I've labeled them as the party of communism. The China initiative obviously put a, a target on the back of uh, all people of uh, Chinese ethnic origin. There are really three types of cases. The first are real cases, people who have done something wrong. The second are false positives, the racial profile, people who, they didn't do anything wrong, but they were prosecuted as if they had. The third category of cases are the changing standards and double standards. These are the folks who were doing something that they were encouraged to do, that then they came to find out, well, the rules have changed. The first type of case is uncommon. They're bad actors who have taken intellectual property from the US to try to develop it in mainland China, starting a company of their own, or passing it on to an existing company or to the Chinese Communist Party. Then there are cases where the suspect has done nothing wrong and has made all proper disclosures, but is nonetheless targeted by the FBI or the DOJ. The most common cases involve researchers and scientists who did not properly follow forms or procedures. For example, they share confidential information from an NIH grant, or they fail to disclose salary supplements like from the Thousand Talents program or the Changjiang Scholar program. When scientists make a grant proposal to the NIH, the NSF, or the DOE, they are required to disclose their ties to Chinese institutions. Still though, these are a far cry from legitimate espionage cases. Many of these are not cases of intentional non-reporting, but instead are a product of oversight and carelessness involving various required forms. Through its talent recruitment programs, like the so-called Thousand Talents program, the Chinese government tries to entice scientists to secretly bring our knowledge and innovation back to China, even if that means stealing proprietary information or violating our export controls and conflict of interest rules. And over the past decade, we've seen economic espionage cases with a link to China increase by approximately 1,300%. And it is a talent recruitment program for China, trying to get these scientists to return to mainland, so they want to make the terms very appealing. 
According to the Federal Bureau of Investigation Director Christopher Wray, China currently represents the greatest long-term threat to intellectual property in the United States. To this end, the FBI has made confronting the threat of counterintelligence the Bureau's top counterintelligence priority. Chinese and Chinese-American scientists in the United States have come under increased scrutiny. Pay attention to your institution's policies and follow them carefully. The climate is not good. You're, you're a target. You could be a target. As Brian Sun would say, don't be stupid. Don't be greedy. The fact that a person is not a spy doesn't necessarily mean he's perfect in disclosing everything. Every university has something like a research integrity office or a sponsored research office. They may have different names depending on the institution, but they basically fulfill four significant roles. The first role is to review a professor's grant proposal, making sure it's coherent, consistent, and that it complies with the grant making agency's disclosure requirements. Then, together with faculty members, they certify the grant proposal and submit it to a federal agency for example, the NIH. The second role is to design annual certifications regarding conflicts of interest or outside activities by faculty members. Many of them now have software that guides the faculty through their disclosure obligations. The third role is training, communication, and education. They organize seminars and training sessions to inform faculty members of grant-making agencies' policies and teach them how to write grant proposals. Attend these training sessions. Click the question mark when filling out a disclosure form on your computer instead of making an assumption that might be incorrect. At the end of the day, it's your responsibility to make sure you know proper procedures. The fourth role is the investigation function. The research integrity officer will look into claims of research misconduct, including misconduct involved in grant proposals. If a professor receives support or income from the Thousand Talents program and the professor forgets to disclose it to the NIH or NSF, the research integrity officer will start an investigation into the incident. Sometimes it is initiated by the university independently, but more often they get a letter from the NIH or another federal agency urging them to investigate the incident. This role is being utilized more and more. In terms of individual faculty members, some of them told me, Catherine, I'm just going to, going forward, make sure that I have nothing to do with China. I will not travel to China to attend conferences, academic conferences. I will not admit Chinese PhD students. I will not co-publish paper with Chinese researchers. But I told them none of the above by itself is illegal, right? It's not illegal to attend conferences in China. It's not illegal to collaborate with a Chinese researcher or hire a Chinese PhD student. In fact, even becoming a thousand talent scholar by itself is not illegal uh, because the offense is the disclosure, not the activity. So you need to fix the disclosure. At the university level, there is an annual requirement to submit a conflict of interest or COI form. Another typical form is the outside activities form. These are becoming increasingly digitized. You may be guided through these forms using your university's portal. Several years ago, it wasn't clear if participation in the Thousand Talents program, a second summer appointment at a Chinese university, traveling for speeches or other informal collaborations would necessitate inclusion on these forms. Now, it is clear that they are required. Make sure you disclose these activities. At the state level, or private foundations, they typically have their own disclosure standards regarding conflict of interest and other financial support. At the federal grant-making agency level, every grant proposal includes the following sections. Your bio sketch, which highlights your individual qualifications, and a support section, which details the financial support you've received from other agencies, foreign governments, foundations, or other organizations. This does not only cover support for a particular project, but general support, such as a salary, a second lab, or student resources from China. It is a federal offense to not disclose this information to the federal authorities under the False Claims Act. Deliberately false claims, but also false and misleading omissions are considered offenses.
in reality, a lot of the professors told me, look, Catherine, I have been a tenured professor for 25 years or for 30 years. I know how to write a grant proposal. I'm not just a new assistant professor from the postdoc program. They felt they knew how to write a proposal, but the rules have changed recently and they may not have been kept up updated. U.S. is in a lot of trouble right now because people who don't know a lot about medicine are weighing in on medical decision making. The message that uh, I would like, uh, um, you know, Chinese Americans to be aware of that you don't have to do anything wrong to be targeted. The reality is you can do everything right and still be erroneously charged with a crime, especially as someone with a Chinese ethnicity. If you've been charged with a crime, you should hire a lawyer. Xiao Xing was charged because the DOJ misidentified research papers he had disseminated. Nothing that they charged me of was true. Everything they said was false. Remember to consider the scientific literacy of those who may be investigating you. If you have two similar projects with independent sources of funding, it may be misconstrued as a double dip, getting paid twice for the same thing. The people in charge of the China Initiative are not all scientists. Of the nearly 5,000 active FBI counterintelligence cases currently underway across the country, almost half are all related to China. Maggie Lewis at, at Seton Hall uh, University has put this extremely well. The China Initiative stigmatizes a bunch of people on the basis of ethnicity rather than identifies a bunch of national assets that are under threat and asks how to secure them. The case starts when your institution gets a letter from an agency like the NIH or NSF telling them a professor or researcher may be involved in the Thousand Talents program or be collaborating with China-based entities. This triggers the institution to launch an investigation of their own. If you do find out you are of interest, don't panic. There's a saying uh, in the United States, it's not the crime, it's the cover-up, right? That sometimes people have done something, it's not such a big deal. But then they lie about it or they conceal it or when they're asked, they give an evasive answer, and that leads to bad outcomes. If you find yourself in a predicament where you think you might need a lawyer, it's a bad idea to try to get on the next flight out of the country. It's also a bad idea to try to talk to your friends or coworkers about your situation. That may place them in a situation where they are obligated to come forward with the information or risk jeopardizing themselves. What you need to do is hire that lawyer something that we'll be repeating throughout this video. Without naming you as a target, the FBI may endeavor to ask you questions about your work. Do not assume it's just a casual talk. I cannot tell you how many times a client would come to us two months later and, and tell us, well, two months ago, I talked to these two FBI agents. They're really friendly and helpful. And um, it was just a casual talk. There's no such a thing as a casual talk with the FBI. Be prepared. It's important to know what the interview is about beforehand. You need to ask specifically, am I a witness or am I a target? Who from the FBI wants to interview me? Are they from the intelligence division, from the national security division, or something else? The division will tell you what they are concerned about. Find out the names of the agents. The best thing you can do in this situation is hire a lawyer. These uh, armed agents uh, rush into my house, running around, yelling FBI, FBI, and uh, so they round up my wife and two daughters um, at gunpoint. Yeah, you, you are asking me whether um, I had uh, thought that I might have done something wrong. That thought, of course, uh, was always on our mind, always on my mind. You never know. I thought maybe somewhere you spat or somewhere, who knows? I al always firmly believe that um, when we do everything in our life, you know, in the work, we need to play by the r rules and uh, follow the laws and uh, do everything. In particular, I uh, for 
for, for a very, very long time, I always believe that one should do everything uh, transparently. If you're asked by your employer about your China ties, you should be truthful. Again, trying to mislead or cover up any ties will lead to greater consequences or create problems where there were none previously. Also, much of the information about your research and ties to China is likely readily accessible. Participation in the Thousand Talents program can be confirmed with a search on Baidu. The university or institution you work for likely has access to your email account. Attempting to hide anything is not a solution. The following actions are considered a cover-up. Deleting emails, shredding papers, deleting text messages, destroying your computer hard drive, deliberately answering questions incorrectly, and asking coworkers to withhold information. When you are asked questions directly by an authority, it is very important that your information is accurate and comprehensive. If you make additional mistakes when attempting to make a correction, it can make the original mistake more severe. There are several techniques to increase the accuracy of your information. Use your passport's visa stamps to create a travel log. Where were you five years ago? How many trips did you make? Who paid for it? How long did it last? What did you do? Corroborate with digital calendars like Google Calendar and Outlook to account for your whereabouts and activities at certain times. If you find you owe back taxes, you can file an amendment. If you have undeclared income, it is important to make corrections. In terms of the university's annual certification, you can't go back and amend it retroactively, but you can still make the disclosure, whether it's on your renewal form or you are making a disclosure directly to your institution's research integrity office. Consider hiring an accountant to go over your finances with you. Again, the best thing you can do in this situation is hire a lawyer. The DOJ website has good information about the China Initiative. The NIH, NSF, and other agencies have implemented rules and guidelines regarding disclosures which are available on their site. Financially, there are organizations that will defend certain Asian American individuals, will assist you directly, and offer pro bono services. I have advice for Chinese scientists, scholars, even students who feel that they might be at risk. It's very simple. Hire a lawyer. Uh, these are difficult technical problems. And even if you have a PhD in a scientific field, even if you're a senior professor, uh, even if you're really great as a scientist, that doesn't mean you know anything about law. You are not trained to read and understand the intricacies of the rules and procedures you are meant to follow. A legal counsel will not only help you to understand the law, but they will help you to better articulate yourself. To have your own counsel with you in the room or in the background when you talk to your employer is very important. The mistake that's oftentimes made by the researchers and professors is they think their lawyer is in the room. In fact, it's not their lawyer. It's the university legal counsel. So to have your own counsel is very important if you are asked by your employer. You may want to consider hiring a lawyer preemptively. If you have received a grant from the U.S. government and have also received or applied for a grant from the Chinese government, you should consult with a lawyer. It's not because the FBI may be getting ready to break down your door but you want to make sure that you've made all necessary disclosures and protected yourself from any potential legal action. You should know your rights. Hire a lawyer. You know, people sometimes think wrongly that if you hire a lawyer, that means you're gonna rush out and sue everyone, that you wanna be really aggressive. Uh, sometimes it's not that at all. Sometimes you want to be conciliatory. Sometimes you just wanna resolve a dispute. You, you want to avoid it. You, you want to say, look, um, I, I wanna come clean and, and how can I make this right? So these cases are not easy cases. Uh, you have to find someone who understands how to defend in what's called a white collar criminal case. The climate has changed radically in the last 10 years. The China Initiative has put all Chinese scientists working in the United States under increased scrutiny. It's using a characteristic you can see, uh, like the color of skin and saying on that basis, we can infer behavior. That's a stereotype. It's not based on someone's actual conduct. It's based on superficial characteristics. 
it's incumbent upon you to comply with all guidelines and regulations and make sure you make all proper disclosures to the relevant authorities. You should make use of your university or institution's Research Integrity Office as a resource throughout this process. And if you're being investigated, if you've been charged with a crime, or if you feel uncomfortable with the process in general, you should hire a lawyer. We work on human health and we are open we are used to sharing that information for the benefit of humanity. And now all of a sudden, uh, there's this anxiety about sharing too much. We make it so unpleasant to be here that those students and scholars don't want to come here. We will not have the best universities in the world. It will be a stunning own goal.